All right, next update. Uh, I got the speaker ready. This is just a uh, plain generic eight watt or eight ohm two uh, one watt one watt speaker uh, that I got just from you know China eBay whatever you call it. Um, I drilled some holes on the speaker floor as well. I also tapered them so there's no you know stuff that that touches the speaker. Um, I drilled seven of them as you can see right there. Um, you just go slow and you put pressure on the, on, you just slowly drill, but I drill with a lot of pressure. So, um, yeah, they come out as really smooth holes because you don't want to, you don't want to put light pressure in the, you know, have the drill bit like slide to the side and scratch the paint. So anyways, uh, next up, I also, uh, drill two little tiny holes, this one and one inside the, inside the headlight itself or the backup light. Um, those are rather tedious because I had a huge drill with a little tiny drill bit and I was really afraid of the drill bit once it went through to, you know, uh, the, for the, to have the drill, you know, hit the headlight or whatever and scratch the paint up. So those are really, I drilled those very carefully. And those will have um, these little tiny SMD LEDs uh, that I'll put inside both the headlight and the rear light. Um, so that should be pretty simple. And then that's pretty much it. I also have the three super capacitors ready for the keep alive. And yeah, one thing to note is that the, um, the speaker is a bit, if it's perfectly on the, on the base, but you see these two side, um, pieces of brass, they're too big and it won't, you know, fit on there properly. Uh, especially with the enclosure. I'm debating if I need an enclosure or not. If I need the enclosure, I need to, you know, uh, remove more material on the sides here, but, um, if I don't use an enclosure, which I don't think it will need it because it's, it's such a small tender, um, then I can remove less material. But basically, I need to remove some material on these sides here. And I marked where the Sharpie were. I need to remove material from. And that's pretty much it. Uh, once this is all done, I'm just move, it'll move on to just simple, simply installing the decoder. All right, so I have the decoder installed in the tender. I still haven't wired the thing up for the engine yet, but the tender is all done. You can see the three supercapacitors laying right there. Uh, they're laying cylindrically like this, um, right against the front here. I have it centered because you don't want the tender to be off balance, so centered in the middle. I have the decoder fit snugly right there. I made sure the wires are insulated so they won't go into the capacitor. I have the speaker right here. This is a 20, standard 28 millimeter speaker. I just got them in bulk, 2 watt speakers, 8 ohms from just eBay, China, whatever you would call it, for really, really cheap, and they sound pretty good. I have a Soundtrax um, enclosure with it. Use the biggest one as possible, and it barely just fits um, hitting the top of this uh, the tender deck. You can see the LEDs uh, wired. I have the LED right in there, if you guys can see that. Anyways, you can see that, that tiny little LED inside there. I have the wires coming straight down. Um, in order to mount the LEDs, I just used a gallery glass clear. So basically the LEDs, I, I first insulated, the, I don't know if I said this already, but I first insulated the LEDs with this amber stuff. Um, you'll, you'll see it in a, in, a, in a photo. I have insulated with this yellow stuff and that makes sure that the LED doesn't touch the inside of the brass headlight casing. Um, and then afterwards, I just uh, used the clear gallery glass to glue it in. And uh, yeah, it actually turns out pretty freaking well. Anyways, and then I have it come down through a little hole. Uh, I have some more clear gallery glass right there, holding to make sure if I do accidentally tug on the wires, I won't pull the LED out. Um, I also did the same thing with the headlight here. You can see there, the wires go through the original headlight hole and then through the back end where I have more gallery glass glue uh, basically holding it in. Um, so anyways, that's the tender light. And then I have the decoder. And then uh, here's a speaker, as I said. Here's the five pin uh, plug. Uh, I haven't put the outer heat shrink tubing over it yet, but I will cover this entire thing with a bigger head heat shrink tubing. But currently there's five wires. Uh, it is LED motor pickup motor LED. That's how it goes. So this way it's actually symmetrical. Um, I don't have the LED or motor, polar uh, motor polarity correct yet. Um, I have the pickup in the middle. So the idea behind this is if I do wire this backwards, if I wire the motor or LED backwards, I could just simply flip the plug backwards. Um, and then that's basically, you know, everything's in the correct polarity. I'll actually have a second plug in the engine. So if the LED or motor is in the correct polarity, if I flip it, 
um, I can use the other plug. I'll, I'll explain it later when I finish the motor wiring up. But basically, the two outer wires is LED. The two middle wires are the, the, the two wires uh, between the two ones that are insulated are the motor wires and the one in the really middle is pickup. So this way I can, it's symmetrical. So I don't, if I accidentally do plug it in backwards, it won't burn out the decoder. Um, but yeah, that, that's how I wire these plugs. I think it's really smart to do so because if you accidentally do plug it in backwards, then you might screw up your uh, decoder. So this is a simple way of doing it. But anyways, that's the plug. Um, and so this tender is pretty much done. Now I just gonna work on the engine and yeah, so I'll see you then. All right, I finally got the engine wired up too. So as I said, this is the five pin plug and um, it has the, lighting on the outside, motor in the second two, and then pick up in the middle wire. Um, and this way I can flip it in case things are in the backwards polarity. In the off case that, um, you know, so this is designed so if the lighting and the motor are both off polarity, then you can flip it and then both would be on polarity. Or if they're both already on polarity, you don't have to do anything. But in the off chance that, say, the, mole the, motor, the motor is in the correct polarity, but the lighting is in the backwards polarity, then we will flip this plug to the proper motor polarity. And then I have a separate plug for the lighting polarity. And this is so I can actually unplug the uh, loco shell from the me mechanism here. So basically, this plug is... I'm like, I can't do this with one hand, but or I can try. But basically, this plug here is for lighting. And so in case, uh, say the motor is in the wrong polarity, but the lighting is in the right polarity, then we would flip this plug, which would flip both. And then we also flip the, light, flip the lighting polarity to get it into the right place again. Um, and this way I can just simply, instead of having to re-solder wires, I could just simply flip a few plugs and then easily, you know, um, wire it to the correct polarity. And also, you know, these, these plugs obviously have use by itself too. This plug allows me to disconnect the engine and tender, and this plug allows me to disconnect the shell from the mechanism, uh, mechanism in case I'm, you know, trying to uh, lubricate or maintain this mechanism. So it's super useful to have some extra plugs. And, um, yeah, I don't know, they're not really hard to do. You also, you just, I mean, I just got this kind of stuff here. They're just really cheap, you know, female and male, uh, JS, or not JSD plugs, but just, uh, PC board plugs you can get from eBay. You know, again, China, eBay, you get for like $5 for like all that stuff. So anyways, yeah, that's pretty much for the engine mechanism or engine wiring. Uh, now let's reassemble this thing, put a, a couple along with the tender and bring it to the layout. All right, uh, so finally I had this down on the track. Um, I did actually go ahead and make sure the polarity is correct. And actually, as soon as I placed it down on the track, the very first try, the polarity was all correct for both the motor and the lights, which is really awesome. And so basically, just, I did some basic programming, uh, getting the uh, chuff rate correct, uh, getting the lighting and what and whatnot correct. And uh, finally, just I painted a few accents. If you guys can see closely, I painted this little thing red, I painted a few of the knobs and the turrets red. I don't know if it's prototypical or not, but I don't really care. And I also painted the uh, light on the back red. Now this one's still drying. This is actually, I actually painted this white, and then I used some red gallery glass, uh, which should eventually um, dry up to be look, look like a clear red lens. Um, but right now it's still drying, so it looks rather opaque. Hopefully though, once it's dried, it should look a lot better. But anyways, um, yeah, so that is pretty much it for this engine. I think I did everything I could possibly do. Um, I painted the... Uh, so yeah, once I got the uh, polarity on the plugs correct, I did paint the uh, the two dots, as you can see there. Uh, two little white dots on the, uh, on the uh, plug there. So now it indicates the correct polarity. So when I do unplug it and plug it back in, I can make sure that it is in the right direction. So that is pretty much it for this engine. I will quickly just show you guys real quick. Uh, here's the whistle. And I chose an automatic bell, which I, I it's probably not the most accurate thing, but I like the sound of it. Because the rear light's on. There's a bit of light bleed. I will fix that eventually, but right now I can't be arsed. But yeah, this is a beautiful model, and I'm I really like it. It's really grown on me. Uh, the especially with the lamp change, lowering down the headlight, and also painting the front a, a little bit of a darker uh, outclad silver, looks so good. And this engine is truly one of my favorites now, comparable to the Sunset H9, which is also one of my favorites. Uh, but yeah, this engine is amazing. I it, I really like it. It's probably gonna be my second favorite engine currently. Um, and yeah, just a great little compact engine, just the right size, not too big, you know, not too big like those 484s, not too small, and uh, just looks beautiful, especially with the headlight and, you know, just the overall uh, look of the Santa Fe uh, engine. So anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the entire journey. As you guys know, this thing started out as a 
damaged um, engine that I bought from trains I actually have the unboxing video um, on YouTube so if you guys want to check that out you can just see the original condition of this but it's been a it's you know gone through quite a few changes and it's really come a long way and it's really looking like an impressive model right now so anyways that's it I uh, hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys enjoyed the build and everything and uh, yeah I'll see you guys next time bye